The greatest adventure is what lies ahead. Today and tomorrow are yet to be said. Hello everyone, this is No Mortal Consequence back again with a new video. This is episode 22 in a series which recounts my ongoing Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which is now in its ninth year. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please hit the like button, and if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. So, spoiler alert, in this video I will be revealing details found in this adventure module. And I also want to point out that I made significant changes to the second half of this module, so what you see in this video series won't match exactly with what's written in the module. As a reminder, this is a current makeup of the uh, player character adventuring party. And uh, one thing I had forgotten to mention in recent videos is by now, the uh, characters had achieved 5th level. So where we left off last time, the characters had explored a uh, containment area, if you will, where an Umber Hulk was being held captive. And they uh, fought the creature and it got away. And they, But they did find some treasure in its lair. So after that, they moved on, entered a new area. You can see Obrak in the lead. And uh, he came around a corner and was confronted by an Etten. And you can see in this screenshot, uh, everyone moved in and uh, started to help fight the thing. And somebody took a critical hit from it. I'm not sure who. Pro it, most likely it was either Aramis or Ubrak. But uh, despite taking the critical hit, uh, they did defeat it. Uh, Thorold cast a haste spell. You can see the icons on there. So, not long after that, the characters were following a corridor and they came to a sunken room. It was, uh, I can't remember how far, but it was significantly lower than the level of the corridor that they were in. And it was also designed to look like a natural cavern. And um, it's not quite in keeping with the spell description, but uh, I allowed Varus to climb on his floating disc, and he basically used it to float down to the level of the cavern area to uh, so he could explore that. And uh, not soon after, uh, not long afterwards, other characters came down as well. Once they got, uh, once a few of them got down there. A couple of creatures emerged from dens that were concealed in the uh, southeastern wall of this place. They were large, dog-like looking creatures, and uh, they had teeth that were made of solid bone plates. And they uh, quickly found out that their bite was so strong it could actually break uh, shields and armor. Uh, as luck would have it, in one particular combat round, both Aramis and Varus fumbled. You can see the results there in the chat window. But eventually they managed to defeat both of the creatures. Then uh, you can see there on the south end of the screenshot, the, uh, there was another corridor that headed off in another direction that the characters would have to climb back up to the uh, level of the dungeon corridors to reach. However, they decided to leave that alone for now and go back the way they came because they were aware of some other areas that had not yet been explored. So, not long after that, they came to a hexagonal shaped room and they could see that there were doors around the perimeter of the room. You can see a couple there, one on the uh, south near Obrak, and then one up on the north edge of the screenshot. What they decided to do was they had Niobe cast a silent spell up there towards the uh, northern half of the room. The uh, intention was to, if there was anything behind those doors, to keep it from hearing while they explored 
the doors on the southern half of the room. And they uh, were getting ready to do that. Then all of a sudden, one of the doors flew open and a troll emerged and began attacking the characters. And then in this screenshot, a couple of rounds later, the noise of the fighting attracted the attention of a second troll, which was down there in the lower left-hand corner. And so it came out and uh, began attacking as well. And after a while, the uh, characters managed to defeat those two trolls. And again, having learned from experience, they uh, quickly set those bodies on fire to keep the trolls from regenerating and coming back. And uh, they quickly explored the rooms that the trolls came from to uh, search for loot. But they wanted to get out of there in case they uh, attracted attention for whatever might be behind those doors to the north. Moving on, they found a door that was clearly a prison cell of some kind. They uh, unlocked it, opened it up, and inside they found several humanoids. You can see it's kind of dark, but you can see a couple of ogres. There's a knoll, a bugbear. But uh, there were also two humans, and they're not visible in here, but uh, there were two humans, and uh, they said that they were farmers that had been captured in raids, you know, which is a story that they've, the characters have heard several times by now. And the farmers told them, told the characters that uh, these humanoids, there were actually three of them originally, but these humanoids had eaten the third one. And uh, so because of that, the characters, of course, rescued the farmers, but they ended up just shutting the door back and locking the humanoids, uh, leaving them locked up inside the cell. The, uh, the humanoids were so weak from their captivity that they didn't resist or anything, so the characters just left them locked up. And then moving on, you can see there in the screenshot, the two farmers are now with the characters. They found another prison cell opened it up and there were more humanoids there. You can see an orc, uh, some goblins, a hobgoblin, and the uh, characters did the same thing here. They just shut the door again, relocked it, and left. After that, the characters returned to Homlet. They brought the uh, rescued farmers with them. You can see them sitting at that table down there at the bottom right corner with Jasmine and Quan and the uh, characters plan to uh, feed them and put them up in the end until they recovered some of their strength and then they could go back on their way to wherever their homes were. And then you can also see in this screenshot the characters were telling uh, Elmo and Turjan what had happened during their latest foray to the temple. Next day, the characters went back. They uh, returned to the room where they had found that Etten, and um, they uh, checked the door there. You can see the characters uh, centered around it, and it was a short flight of stairs going down. Not, not so much as to go down to the, another lower level. It was just a short flight of stairs, but it was still on the third level. So the uh, characters soon found a room that was completely furnished and decorated in black and but they didn't have much time to check it out and they were suddenly swarmed by a bunch of shadows and you can see uh, the first group of them there in this screenshot there were a lot more than that though they uh, kept moving in from the darkness to the north and it uh, took a while, but eventually the characters were able to defeat the shadows. Then once they were defeated, they were able to more thoroughly explore this room that uh, was decorated and furnished all in black. And uh, they did find some treasure in the room. Then moving on, they soon found a similar room, only this one, the color theme was in red instead of black. But uh, I don't think they found anything here. 
going on down another corridor, they found an alcove with a water or with a fountain that was flowing with water, and then there was a door just to the north. So they decided to investigate that. And opening it up, they found a very richly decorated room. But just inside the entranceway, you can see it there between Aramis and Obrek. There was a skeleton of a, uh, apparently a female elf lying on the floor. Not long after that, the uh, ghost of the elf appeared, who has now become a banshee. Or in the uh, monster manual, it's called a groaning spirit. And it uh, has an attack form where it does this... It's called a keen whale, and it uh, did that attack against the entire party. They all had to make a saving throw versus the whale, and uh, unfortunately Thoral failed his saving throw, and he actually died right on the spot from fright from hearing that thing. And, uh, of course, by now it was still kind of in darkness but everybody could see it and they had to make another saving throw this time versus fear and everybody failed that saving throw except for Obrak and they all turned and ran away out of the room and uh, Obrak was the only one left to uh, do battle with this creature and unfortunately you can see Obrak made a fumble there and uh it took some uh, time to recover from that, but even though that happened, he still ultimately managed to come close to defeating the thing. And once it got low enough on hit points, it uh, stopped attacking and told Obrak that if he would spare it, that it would lead him to where it had hidden some treasure while it was still alive. And so Obrak agreed to that, and it led him to a nearby room where there was a little hidden area that uh, when the female elf was still alive, she had hidden some things, some valuables. And uh, so Obrak recovered that, and about this time, the other characters who had run away had gotten over the fright, and they... Uh, the party all uh, rejoined each other and the uh, groaning spirit disappeared or whatever. So I don't have any screenshots, but the characters took Thoral's body back to Hamlet and someone had one of those Wake the Dead scrolls still from the previous Halloween adventure, so they uh, decided to use that to bring back Thoral so that they wouldn't have to travel all the way to uh, to the city and uh, pay to have Thoreau resurrected there. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, I did make some changes to this module and those are, some of those changes are about to come into play here, so I, I just want to briefly go over them, although I may eventually make a whole video just outlining all the different changes I made in case uh, anyone's interested in using some of the ideas themselves. But uh, first of all, and this won't make any sense unless you're already familiar with the module, but if you are, uh, one of the things I did was I just totally removed the fungus demon Zuckmoy and I replaced her with a demoness Loth. And also, I removed the elemental nodes, and you, normally the characters won't reach those areas until right at the very end of the adventure, but uh, I got rid of those, and the whole point of those was to recover these four elemental gems, and what I did instead was the uh, characters obtained the elemental gems by destroying the main worship altars in each of the elemental factions on levels one and two. And I, I made a brief reference to that several videos ago where uh, the, the cleric Turjan had told them that they would need to destroy the altars or else the uh, 
elemental factions would just attract new worshippers. So they had, by this point, they had done all that and had acquired the four elemental gems. Now on the uh, third level where they currently are, the whole, like, northern third of this level is sealed off. And the way the module was written, it's really unlikely that the characters would ever be able to access that sealed area. But it's kind of important. So what I did was... Um, I added a new way of accessing that area, but the uh, characters had to possess the elemental gems before they could do it. And essentially, it was another doorway, but the uh, elemental gems acted as keys of a sort. And uh, so, if you have all four of the gems, then you could reach that area. So that's what uh, is shown in this screenshot. The characters first entered this uh, sealed up northern third of the third level. And they, when the characters first enter this area, the first thing that they found set in the floor were these glowing portals. And they appeared uh, to correspond to each of the four elements and right there they're looking at the uh, elemental air portal and then you can see fire and water and further to the north out of the screenshot is the uh, portal for portal for elemental earth all right well that's all i have for now uh, again if you enjoyed the video uh, please hit the like button and if you haven't uh, consider subscribing to the channel and uh, feel free to share the video, leave comments, and uh, anything you can do to help promote the channel. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Bye for now.